Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Project Dark Knight Horror and I am your host, The Dark Knight. Today we're going to be focusing on ghosts, poltergeists and demons. We're going to take a deep dive into the world of the paranormal. So stick the kettle on and make a cup of tea and let me show you the truth. It's that time again, so close the door, shut the curtains and turn off the lights and go full screen as you get ready to watch. Paranormal videos that will make you 100% believe in the devil. On today's show. Like I'm really sweating. Oh my god. Yeah, what's wrong? Holy shit, Scott. Oh my god, that's huge. There's a huge scratch down your back. I don't want to play anymore. Why? Your nose is bleeding. It's not bleeding. It's bleeding. Can you see? No se oye nada. No se oye. Que fue eso? Are you? No, wait, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> what is going on? Imaginary friend. If you're like me and you've spent your entire life researching the paranormal in pursuit of those elusive questions like what happens when we die? then you'll know that some of us can see, hear, and sense ghosts more than others. What makes one person more prone to sensing ghosts than another? Are they born with it? Or is it passed down from family members? Or is it all down to luck and fate is decided by the roll of a dice? The answer is, we just don't know. But what I do know is, children and some animals are more in tune to seeing ghosts. The following footage is of a young child and her parents. As the kid was playing, suddenly she started staring up at the ceiling and pointing. Now, this isn't the first time that this has happened. The child has been seen many times interacting with someone or something that cannot be seen. So her dad started recording and this is what he filmed. Watch. We're telling you there's nothing up there. You're tired, but who are you laughing at? Who? Do you see somebody there? Oh, do you dance? Oh, are they leaving? You're following them, huh? Where'd they go? What am I looking at? Oh my gosh. You're creeping me out. Um, are you wanting them to pick you up? Are they teaching you some dance moves? Because I've never seen this one before. Trina, what are they telling you? What do you see up there? So what was the child looking at? There was something that only the child could see that held her attention. And the problem is, this has happened many, many times before, and it's gradually getting worse. I'm going to keep my eyes and ears open for any developments on this family, so please watch this space. It's a gin thing. The following clips are of a seven-year-old boy who constantly complains about sleeping in his room because according to him, the ghost of a little girl 
would keep him up all night long. So his parents started recording him sleeping at night as well as during the day. This is just one of many recordings from the home CCTV. In this video, the boy is taking an afternoon nap when all of a sudden, weird things start to happen. Watch. So the camera was placed directly onto the boy so the parents could find out exactly what was scaring him in his bedroom. As he tries to fall asleep, something tugs on his blanket. Then, a few seconds later, you see it move again. The boy, who is now awake, looks like he's used to this kind of activity. This footage upset the boy's mum badly because for the first time, she now knew that this was real and not just the boy's imagination. The boy became so used to the paranormal activity that happened all around him that instead of running away to his parents' bedroom, he would just lie still and wait for the activity to stop. Being the only child in the home, he didn't have any siblings to play with, so he would play with his toys for hours on end, and after some time, his parents would hear him talking to another person while looking at something. The boy had created an imaginary friend. Now, that in itself is no cause for alarm, but as you just saw in the last clip, his imaginary friend started to become a real problem. The clip you're watching is of the home CCTV of the living room that's been zoomed in to the boy who's playing with his toys, when all of a sudden he sees the bear move just a little, but then carries on playing with his toys. Then, a few moments later, the bear's arm moves again. Then gradually, the movements become a lot more obvious, until something makes the bear leap into the air scaring the little boy which sends him running scared out of the room. Since they installed CCTV cameras in their home, the boy's parents now know the whole truth, that their little boy is being haunted. After seeking some professional help, the family claim they have a jinn in their home. A jinn, or in some places in the Middle East, it is known as a genie. But don't get it twisted, this isn't the spirit that grants you wishes. The jinn is an entity from the Arabic culture. Just like we have ghosts and demons, Arabic people and those from that part of the world call them jinns and they can inhabit a wide variety of forms like a cat or a dog. And in other cases like this one, they can appear as a child. Since filming this, the family have had an imam visit and bless their home. 
Just like us Christians have priests, Muslim people have imams. And as of my last email from the family, the activity still persists in their home. But these things take time. And now they have the help from their mosque. I'm sure that gradually things will get better. The bad idea. The YouTube channel An Everyday Canadian has been making content since February 2016. The channel's owner is a Canadian man by the name of Scott Harback. Scott makes content about everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Some of the topics that Scott covers are things to do with music and concerts, reaction videos, exploring abandoned buildings, travel and hacks, skits, stunts, fitness and fishing, video games, pranks, gardening, metal detecting, challenges, and a lot more. But out of the 406 videos that Scott has uploaded to his channel, there is one video that stands out for me, and that one video just so happens to be about the paranormal. Four years ago, on the 4th of October 2017, Scott decided to use a Ouija board for the first time with his friend Natasha. Up until the moment he opened the box, Scott had never touched a Ouija board, let alone use one. So when Scott and his friend decided to film themselves while using the Ouija board for the first time with no prior experience or knowledge, he had no idea that the events that took place that evening on the 4th of October 2017 would stay with him and scar him mentally, physically and religiously and leave him never wanting to touch another Ouija board ever again. Watch. What's up guys, an everyday Canadian and today we are playing with a Ouija board. It's the month of October. Um, so I've never played with one of these before. <clears throat> if any of you guys don't know what a Ouija board is, it's a board that summons spirits. Um, this has never been opened. Want me to read the rules? Sure. Okay, so there are some rules. Uh, you never use the Ouija board if you think it's just a game, because it's not, supposedly. Never use the Ouija board alone. Always have two players, never one. Never use the Ouija board in a cemetery. That's probably going to be another video we're going to do. Never leave the planchette, which is this, on the Ouija board when you are, aren't using it. So don't just leave it on the board. Uh, never forget to say goodbye to the Ouija board spirit. Okay. okay. It's just so it moves. Okay. Um, basically, yeah, always keep it away from the Ouija board unless you're ready to play. Put it down. If not, then take it off the Ouija board if you need a minute to stop. Go to the washroom. Do whatever yeah. you got to do. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to probably do this in my basement. Um, there's been strange noises and all that. I don't honestly know what it is, guys. I don't know. We never go into the basement. It's more like a storage. Okay, um, let's sit down. We're going to play this game. Why did it beep off like that? I don't know. The camera's been acting weird. I don't know. Ever since we came down here, it started beeping funny, so... I Let's just play this. Also say that, be like ever since we started setting the board up. Well, okay. yeah, guys, um, ever since we started in the basement, the camera's acting funny. It's weird. I don't know what it is. I uh, The battery's full. Um, there's a new recording chip in it. It's all good. So let's just play this. I'm actually really hot right now. So uh, so first thing we got to do is put our fingers on Circle the... Circle the board twice. So there's two players. One, One two... two. So, uh, you want to ask a first question? Um, are you a girl? Whoa. My hands are like, not even touching it. I'm so loose fingers right now. <laughs> so am I. I take it it's a yes? <laughs> yeah, that would be the yes. Okay. Bring back to the middle of the board. Okay. Um, how did you die?
Whoa, that's trippy. Whoa. Drown. Drown? Drown. My chest feels heavy. Chest feels heavy? Yeah. Yeah, my back is starting to feel like cramped up. Like I almost got like a pinched in the back. Yeah, let me check it. I want to go for a minute. Keep yeah, because it. it's... um. It's really starting to hurt. Like I got a lot of pressure in my back. It's hot. Like I'm really sweating. Oh my god. Yeah, what's wrong? Holy shit, Scott. Oh my god, that's huge. There's a huge scratch down your back. Is there? Cause, um, oh my god. I, I could have done Like guys, I'm I serious. I like I'm gonna show you my hand beside you know, his. I could have hit it but I didn't even know about it. No, like look, this is my hand. Okay, the scratch starts here, goes all the way down to here. It's just burning right now. I'm sweating. Like it's like a hundred degrees down here. Oh my god, that's like poofed out too. Oh my well, god. Well, let's just hurry this up. I don't want to be down. I don't want to play long. anymore. Well, we have to say goodbye. We have to finish this up. So just put your hands back on and. <sighs> I don't, I don't want to play anymore. Well, you got to see something. Okay. Uh, just ask another question Fuck or me, something. I'm scared. Well, I gotta see. Uh, we have to finish this game, okay? okay. Um, just, uh, just think of something to say real quick. Um, I don't know, I don't know what to ask. I'm, I'm scared, like, after seeing your back like that. Uh, I don't want to play anymore. Why? Your nose is bleeding. It's not bleeding. It's bleeding. Let me get the light. Hold on. Okay, maybe we should stop. Look at me. Hold this near your face. Hold on, I can't see. Can you see? Yeah, it's bleeding. We should stop. We right should... there, look at me. Yeah, your nose is, is, is bleeding. bleeding. Yeah, okay. it is. Well, let's just say goodbye and then okay. uh, we're done because it's dripping all down me. Okay, hold on. Let me face the camera back at the board. Okay, hurry up. Let's go. I'm upstairs. trying. Because I'm about to get sick. Okay, hold on. Ah! Yes, I'm done. I'm not playing anymore. I'm fucking bullshit. Fuck that. Fuck that. I just want to highlight something. There are a lot of different Ouija boards from different companies, but interestingly enough, throughout the years, the rules have changed. Also, before this video aired, Scott planned on using the Ouija board in the cemetery, which that in itself would be asking for trouble. But lucky enough, because of what transpires next, the cemetery idea was binned. And Scott admits he's been experiencing weird sounds coming from the basement and thinks that it could be haunted. So maybe that's why things went horribly wrong. Weird sounds could be heard all around them and Scott's camera kept glitching and beeping. They asked the board if there's a spirit of a girl and immediately the pointer moves to yes. Then they ask how did she die? and the pointer spells out drowned. And at that exact moment, a child's voice can be heard screaming. Now remember, it's late at night and they're both in the basement, but the voice comes through the camera's audio. What's more, the duo using the board never even heard it. Then Scott starts complaining about a sensation he can feel on his back. So Natasha volunteers to check his back and in doing so, they both forget the number one cardinal rule when using the Ouija board. Never take your hands off the planchette 
when the board is open. And Natasha discovers why Scott's back is hurting. Down Scott's back, running vertically, is three red long marks which look like scratches. Also, the marks on his back start to get more pronounced and raised. Natasha doesn't want any part of this and now wants to stop playing the widgie board. But of course, you can't just stop playing like that. So Scott explains that they have to close down the board and say goodbye. Then, if things couldn't get any worse, all of a sudden, it does. Natasha tries to explain that she's done and is scared and wants to go home. When she notices, Scott's nose is bleeding. At first, he doesn't believe her, but the camera films him touching his nose and it slowly dawns on him that yes, in fact, blood is pouring out of his nose. So immediately, they decide to move the planchette over the word goodbye. And that's when they get the scare of their life. The board completely moves by itself and the planchette does too. Scott takes his fingers off the planchette and it leaps into the air a few centimeters. I've watched that scene a few times now in slow motion and in reverse. And what I can see is that Natasha was reaching out for the planchette. Her hands were nowhere near the board. Scott too wasn't touching the planchette or the board when it moved. So they never actually got to say goodbye or close down the board. No rest from the wicked. My next case comes from a Mexican woman called Rochelle Chavez who lives in a modest home with a family in Chihuahua, which is in Mexico. And for the last few years, the family have all experienced strange and creepy occurrences that cannot be rationally explained. The parents used to tell the kids just to ignore the sounds. But as the kids grew older, the activity grew too. So one of the family members started recording the weird activity in their home, then uploaded it to social media in the hopes that someone would see it and get in contact and try to help. This is what Rochelle recorded. Son las, no sé si se alcanza a ver, las 3 de la mañana con un minuto y mi hermana me acaba de levantar porque dice que se escuchan ruidos en el cuarto. Mi esposo y mi niña están dormidos y vamos a ir a ver qué se escucha en el otro cuarto. No hay nadie, solamente estamos mi hermana, mi hija, mi esposo y yo. Aquí en este cuarto está solo porque en estos últimos días nadie ha podido dormir aquí. Como podrán ver, el cuarto está totalmente solo y pues nadie duerme aquí. Solo estamos nosotros. Mi hermana dice que se escuchan cosas, pero... Uy, me asusté. Pero no sé, pues no se oye nada. No sabe... Amor, amor, levántate, levántate porque ya le pegaron la puerta. No sé qué pasó. Vinimos a yo. Se escuchó la puerta, se escuchó la puerta. Mira, acabamos de venir y no estaba así. Todos los cajones están abiertos. Oh, Dios. Mira, amor. ¿Qué fue? No se ve nada. Son las 3 de la mañana, no hay nadie en la calle, no se ve absolutamente nada. La cortina se movió, ¿cuál cortina? ¿Al cuarto? ¿Se movió el cuarto? Ahí está. 
Esa, esa, esa. Esa. La niña está dormida. Estamos solos. No sabemos qué fue lo que pudo haber pasado. Pues no Mi esposo anda nadie. viendo. ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Qué es, amor? Se movió la puerta, no sé qué. ¿Qué voy a traer aquí? Nada, nada. A ver. A ver, espérate, espérate, espérate. No hay nada. No hay nada en el baño. The family kept getting disturbed every night at 3 in the morning. It is known around the world that 3 a.m. is the witching hour, and it is regarded by paranormal experts as a time when pure evil, whether it's spirits or demons, can make their presence felt. Something else you should know is that experts believe that Jesus Christ died in the middle of the afternoon at 3 o'clock p.m. So, this is a deliberate mocking Christianity. The inversion of 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. is thought to be demons using the opposite hour to torment humans. Lastly, the number three is also synonymous with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is known as the Holy Trinity. Every night, they hear strange noises, taps and bangs, footsteps, and whispers. As you can see, the house is really small and you can literally see from one end of the house to the other so they know there's no one else apart from them in their home but then all of a sudden someone or something starts knocking on their door they run to the safety of Rochelle's bedroom and ask her husband Arilla to check the door as he makes his way to the front door to see who's knocking you can hear all the neighborhood dogs barking in the background as though something has agitated them. The family are scared and things only get worse when Rochelle discovers all the bedroom cupboards and drawers are open. I've often said the worst thing you can do when you hear your door knocking and there's no one outside is open it and the Chavez family do just that but there's no one outside the door. Then. They hear loud banging coming from the bathroom and it becomes obvious that something is trying to scare the family. Seguimos grabando porque no dejan de escucharse los ruidos. Son las 3.19 de la mañana. No dejan de escucharse las cosas. Abre la puerta. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? Abre, abre la puerta. Cuidado, cuidado. Yo primero. Se escucha, se escucha bien claro, pero no hay nadie. No hay nadie afuera de la casa. Ahora está Lupe enfrente, mira. Solamente se escuchan todos, la gente negro. ahorita a estas horas está dormida. Mira un cuarto negro. No sabemos qué sea, ya tenemos días. Sintiendo cosas extrañas. Últimamente se ve, se siente una vibra medio extraña. No sabemos qué sea. ¡Ay, Dios! ¿Viste la mona en la cabeza? La cabeza de la mona. Es por los nervios, mi amor, es por los nervios. Estamos solos. No sabemos qué hacer. Me está dando el Parkinson. Pendejo. Eighteen minutes later, Rochelle is still recording because the sounds in the family's home haven't stopped. After the front door bangs again, they check if anyone's outside, and 
As the camera passes over a soft toy, it suddenly moves. It's as if the ghost or evil spirit is letting the family know it's in their home with them. Few times in these clips, members of the family laugh when scary things happen. And I find this very interesting because tests have shown that people react differently to fear. Some people scream, some people swear, some people jump up and down and others laugh. I believe the events that happened this night were 100% real. Also, on Rochelle's TikTok and Instagram, there are only these five videos. They never made any more before or after, which makes them even more compelling. Seguimos aquí en la grabación. Mi esposo fumando, que no falta el vicio. Mi hermano aquí casi llorando. ¡La puerta! ¿Quién anda ahí? Vean, es que no hay nadie. No es nadie. Todo se ve absolutamente solo. No hay absolutamente nada. <risa> Ay, esperen. Ay, güey. Las cielos. Aquí están todas paniqueadas, todas asustadas. Los perros Vamos a ver, vamos a ver para allá adentro qué, qué se mira, qué se ve. Los perros así toda. Los perros así toda la noche. Toda la noche. Desde las 3 de la mañana. Hasta como a las cuatro y media. Así están. Cierra la hija, por favor. La mona no la quisimos ya ni tocar. Vean. Tírame, tengo miedo. Vamos a ver allá. Pero no hay nada. In the third video, things have gotten worse. The whole family are now on a heightened state of fear. The husband is smoking to calm himself down and the sister is almost in tears. Then, instead of the door banging, the door handle starts rattling up and down. Something is trying to open it. Immediately again, they check outside and again, there's no one there. A cup is then thrown across the room which scares them even further. Then, the whole room gets ice cold and the husband, Arillo, tells the camera that he can feel the temperature in the room dropping. No sé ni qué horas son, pero se están escuchando ruidos. Y estamos solas. Mi esposo anda trabajando. Mis hermanas están dormidas. Saray, Saray, despiértate. Acompáñenme a ver allá adentro. Se están escuchando ruidos otra vez. Voy a despertar a nadie. Ani, levántense por favor para que me acompañen a ver allá adentro. Se están escuchando ruidos. Vamos. Agarra por favor a la niña. Dios mío, estamos solas. No sé si alcanzan a escuchar. Se escucha el perro. ¿Qué horas son, hija? Son las 3.33 de la mañana. Ay, Dios. Estamos solas, mi esposo. Le tocó trabajar. No sé si es imposible. 
Ai. No sé si es imposible dormir. Cuando estamos solas. Ay, no, no puede ser. No puede ser, no puede ser. Cada vez se nos hace más difícil dormir. Ay, Dios. Ay, Dios. Ay, no. Acompáñenme por favor a ver si no es alguien. Ay. Ay, no, que puede, puede ser, no puede ser, no puede ser. ¿Hay alguien? Ay, Dios mío, no quiero salir. Salimos a ver qué había, pero no hay nadie. No se ven... ¡Ay, Dios! ¿Qué fue eso? The fourth clip starts at 3.30 a.m. It's two days later now and the husband is at work and Rochelle is wide awake because the noises in her home are getting louder every day. She explains that the noises have persisted non-stop for the last 15 days and she feels very tired and sleep deprived. She wakes up her sister because she's scared and has to check the other rooms because it sounds like someone's in there. All the while, you can hear footsteps and knocks and bangs. Then, her young daughter wakes up too. Rachel is now terrified. She's all alone with two young girls. She's very tired, not to mention it's 3.30 a.m., which she knows is the time that spirits and demons are more active. Then, they both see the curtain move, which makes the girls retreat into another room. There's no escape in this nightmare. They can still hear noises all around them because the house is so small. They go to the back door and open it to check if anyone's outside. You can tell by Rochelle's breathing and her sister's cries that they're both terrified. Then, out of nowhere, a knife lands on the ground right in front of Rochelle. They're just about to peek around the corner where the knife was thrown from when all of a sudden there are two loud bangs which send the girls running back into the house. But in between the screams and bangs, you can hear a set of loud footsteps running behind them. And that's where the recording ends. There wasn't any more videos after that and the account has now gone quiet. The last post was in July and that goes for all the other social media accounts too. I reached out to Rochelle and asked if her and her family are doing okay. So, if she replies, I will be sure to let you guys know. Until then, why not jump over to our TikTok and show some support? But don't forget, in the comments, tell her the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you. If you've seen something scary, creepy, or amazing, and you've captured something paranormal on camera, or maybe you're a paranormal investigator and you need some help to get your content out there. Or you might be unlucky enough to live in a haunted house and you need some help and answers because you think you're all alone. Well, you're not. Project Dark Knight Horror is here for you. So send in your videos, photos, clips, links and absolutely anything to do with the paranormal to Project Dark Knight. The email is on screen. Thank you. I scream, he screams. The next series of videos you're about to watch are a few years old now. 
and some of you would already have seen them. But as usual, I don't just play random one-off clips. When I cover a story, I try to explain the background information and the paranormal activity and how it affects people. And in some cases, I'll give advice and explain things that can or should have been done to avoid it from happening again. So with that being said, this is my deep dive on Nick Semino 68. This is Nick Semino, who is a professional photographer, YouTuber, and is the owner of an ice cream business called Twirls and Swirls. After leaving school, Nick worked as a photographer, which was his passion. Most of his posts on Instagram were about photography and his love for it. But a few years later, his photography was put on the back burner because of an illness in the family. Nick had to step up and take over the family business. He worked as an owner slash manager of Swirls and during the evening and holidays, he did his photography on the side. To the outside world, Nick was happy, but all of that was about to change. You see, Nick's house was haunted and every few months, he and his family would experience activity, but it usually died down. But Nick found some items in his home which caused the paranormal activity to amp up to a whole new level. Nick always thought it was an electrical box and never told his family about it. But when they had to paint the bedroom, that's when they forced the lock open. And inside the cubby was a plastic bag. The bag was stuffed into the corner of the cupboard. And because of all the loose wires, that's why it was never discovered before. But when they opened the bag, this is what they found. I have laid all the cards out and we've been doing some research. You could only see them well with the flashlight, but a lot of the medications these people were taking were for schizophrenia and other like disorders like that. Some were for bipolar and some were from anxiety or like psychotic episodes. And this is mind blowing. These obviously are the easy ones to see. And it says like their department, their telephone number, all this, but these were crazy. You get the date you get the doctor that prescribed it when they have to take it and what drug it was so it says exactly who these people were who their doctors were when they should take their medicine and what their medicine was for it's insane sorry if i'm talking really close to the microphone i'm like mad close this is mind-blowing they're like falling apart and dirty Okay, so for the next video, I'm going to gather their names, their addresses, who their doctors were. I'm going to try to figure out if any of them are still alive, why these were hidden in my house. Maybe someone lived in my house that like was in the psych ward or something like that. I'm going to research some of the buildings. I'll try to get answers. Because... Are you fucking kidding me? No fucking way. This is like an actual horror movie. <laughs> I literally think I just like summoned something. I don't want to be down here now. I'm I'm not going to be that person who like walks into the noise. Okay, that creepy stuff on the wall was for me. I do photo photography. I'll link my Instagram. But <laughs> literally plugging my Instagram when a ghost like attacked. Sorry, I just cut I let go of the button, but <sighs> Okay, good. Good. What the fuck? Inside the bag were dozens of ID cards from patients that were admitted to an insane asylum or Kings Park Psychiatric Center. 
These cards were from back in the day when doctors would lobotomize patients. Now, thankfully, lobotomies are no longer carried out because we now know the procedure did more harm than good. A lobotomy is a procedure when the doctor would make an incision on the patient's head and then a sharp metal stake would be hammered into the brain. The metal ice pick would puncture a part of the brain called the prefrontal lobe and it was thought back then that by puncturing that part of the brain it would cure a patient of mental illness. The doctor would drive the stake through the nose but most of the time it would go through the side of the eye. 50,000 patients were treated this way in the United States alone between 1949 and 1952, but the worldwide number is thought to be much, much higher. This horrific treatment of having an ice pick hammered into your brain was thrust upon you for illnesses like schizophrenia, manic depression and bipolar disorder, as well as lesser causes. The sad fact of the matter was, having this procedure forced onto you would leave the patient worse off in a semi-veg-like state, with mostly all of their humanity taken away from them, and would leave the person in a wheelchair needing constant care for the rest of their lives. Also, a lot of patients died from mistakes and botched lobotomies, so I can understand why a lot of angry spirits remained or followed the doctor that used to live in Nick's home. So when Nick's family started renovating and found the IDs of the dead patients, the paranormal activity went from sometimes to all the time, literally overnight. And why did the doctor keep all the IDs? I guess we'll never know, but something isn't right. Okay, I'm literally at work right now. I'm alone. That's my car. There is not one other car in the parking lot. Look, the freaking light's flickering from the reflection in the window. I don't know what's going on. I'm here alone, and this is what I deal with that I usually don't catch on camera. This is the light switch. Ready? This? I'm... Oh, I think I stopped it. Did I stop it? No, I didn't. I didn't stop it. I don't know what's going on, and this makes absolutely no sense. And now it stopped. Good. And ready? Here we go. Because that makes sense, right? This is what I deal with and no one understands. And of course I'm here alone and this is like a friggin' murder house. This is my security cameras. There's no one here. So I don't understand. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Hello? What the fuck? Okay guys, we were literally just about to leave my store when shit just started flickering again. This is the second time it's happened. My car's over there, and- I'm shaking right now. Okay, and her keys are in the fucking okay, back. We need to go home. We need to go get my keys. And the light turned on. I don't wanna go. Okay, well, I'm gonna literally record this whole thing just so you guys can see what happened. I'm literally I'm so, so fucking scared. scared. Right what the fuck? Oh my God. Okay, oh my God. okay, go, go, something. Go. The bathroom light's on too. What the fuck? What's this like? Bro, why are my keys on the fucking floor? They were not there. Like, I did ass put them on the desk. Like, oh my god. What the hell? This, this is literally insane. Okay guys, we've been sitting in the back for like 20 minutes now and we're just watching the cameras and stuff is still flickering and going on but nothing happened back here and we need to go home and this is so freaking terrifying. We're 50 minutes past our shift because <laughs> of this shit. Like, it, we closed at 10. So we need to like, it's and it's so dark because all the light switches are over here. <gasps> stop it, stop it, fucking go, fucking okay. go, fucking go. <laughs> okay, this is what I mean. The broom is over. This is. Oh my god. This is this is what we're dealing with. Oh my god, yo, what the fuck, bro, Nick? Did you fucking do this on purpose? I, you fucking fake this. No, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, Nick. Stop. stop. You're literally. Are you? No wait, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> we literally looked away for like two seconds. So according to Nick, his house was always haunted and always had activity but nothing crazy like. 
But then, after finding these ID cards and researching, the activity started happening daily. Then, his parents started seeing figures in the hallway of their home, and the general feeling was the ghosts didn't want Nick researching into their history. But Nick carried on, because to be honest with you, people were interested in his social media, and he was getting a lot of views. But this would lead to the spirits latching on to Nick, and they would follow him wherever he went. And this meant when Nick took over the family business at Swirls, the ghosts followed too. The activity in Nick's home got worse, and so did the activity at work. Nick was used to it, but after a while, it stopped being funny. Okay guys, my lights have been flicking for like two minutes. We heard a baby crying and now they won't stop. Two of the lights blew out. It's, <gasps> what? I think I just seen the shadow. Where? Yo, I think I just literally seen the remote fall. The, oh my God. <gasps> I don't know what to do. I don't want to even move from over here. This is insane. Did you catch it on camera? Is anyone there? The TV's on. The blue light's on for the... Okay, this is great. What is happening? Hello? Hello? The other lamp just went off down there. Hello? Okay guys, I just caught the video because something literally rolled out of the dark in front of me and my mom and I still haven't gone down there, so we're just staying in the flickering kitchen. Okay guys, I've been trying to literally communicate with something, like there's no AC on, it's winter, this window's cracked, but this has been moving and I've been trying to communicate with whoever is here, but it's not really communicating back now and I kept hearing tapping. But like I just want to show you like this is a normal day in my house like my mom is these are the rooms my mom is downstairs cooking dinner and these rooms are a mess I know <laughs> my mom is down here cooking dinner so this is what I like experience on a day-to-day -day basis like weird stuff like this just normally happens and okay I love that what fell over in here now I don't even know <laughs> oh my god and nothing. Oh. Okay, that's weird. Is there anyone here that can give me a sign? Is there anyone here that can give me a sign? And something just fell off the counter. Right in front of my face. Holy shit! <laughs> okay, is there anyone here? Yay, that was fun. Love this room. Just again, this is... Oh my god, my camera won't even focus. Hello? Can you use the dream catch? Okay, my camera's not even focusing, this is so weird. Can you use the dream catcher again to try to communicate with me, please? Okay. I think it made a sound out here again. Hello? Is there anyone here? We used to see a bar. Bar. Tender. Over here. Okay, you're clearly here. Is there any reason you were here? If you would like to communicate with me, can you please give me one sign as an okay? Okay, whoa, oh my gosh, and I did you see that? Nah. I just got a ball rolling on camera Okay, so you obviously want to communicate is there something that I can help you with? If there's a way I can help you can you please let me let me know keep hearing tapping. These walls are hollow. Whoa! Whoa! 
Okay. And where are you? I'm right here. Did you see that? No. I heard it. That's insane. So things have been pretty quiet, I guess not. But these walls are hollow. And we kept hearing tapping on the backs of the walls. And inside here, this is the only hollow room. This is like cement. So I don't know. Holy shit. What was that? Oh my god. Okay, well, now you can see there's no strings, no nothing. There's a wall of glass behind it. Oh my gosh. <gasps> what was that? <laughs> my, my shoulder. Oh. <laughs> Spirit, if you're here right now, you're insane. Oh my God, Jesus Christ! No, I know what fucking spirit. Okay, what is? What? Okay, my lights are. What is going on, spirit? Is there a reason you're breaking glass? Are you upset with me that I'm recording right now, spirit? Oh my god, I, I literally, this is not real. Okay, no way. Okay guys, the lights just started flickering again. This creaked open and I've been trying to see what the heck is going on. It's literally insane and I keep hearing things all the time. Like what? This is, oh my God, what is going on? The sink is on. I literally hear the sink. What is going on? What is this? Hello? Stuff was literally flying downstairs. Oh my God. Spirit, enough. Like stuff is just being thrown from the wall. And now the TV's off. What is going on? Then the neighbors started calling Nick when he was at work, telling him that they could see a figure of a woman in the window that they had never seen before. And when they waved, the figure would just stare at them. Remember, it might be fun and interesting at the beginning of a haunting, but it becomes very serious and very frightening very quickly. Things were going from bad to worse for Nick, and he was starting to slowly realize that his home was being taken over. If you've watched my videos in the past, then you'll be familiar with door knocking. That's when the spirits knock on your door, and if you open it, then it is rumoured by paranormal investigators all over the western world that the ghosts will have much more control over your home, being free to roam into any room in your house. Okay guys, like I literally just checked all downstairs, I checked the rooms, <gasps> and this is like things just keep, oh my god, and someone's knocking. <laughs> Hello? This is, this is what I deal with. This is literally what I deal with. Oh my God. Hello? Spirit, is there a reason that you're doing this? Is, is this, is there a reason that you're doing this, Spirit? Is there a reason that you're doing this? Okay. I'm not understanding. Okay, lights are flickering. Lights are going off. Everything in my house just went out. What is going on? Is there anyone here? Oh my God. No fucking way, no fucking way. Spirit? Okay. 
Okay, what is... <laughs> okay, my lights are... What is going on? Spirit, is there a reason you're breaking glass? Are you upset with me that I'm recording right now? Spirit? <laughs> Hello? Spirit, is there a reason that you're doing this? Oh my. Okay. Okay. Everything is happening all at the same time. Did that? I think more glass just literally broke. I swear, like. Is there a reason you're so upset with me right now? Spirit, is there a reason that you're upset with me? Is it because I'm recording? If it's because I'm recording, can you please give me one more sign and I will stop? Are you mad that I'm moving? Oh my god, my guinea pig just scared the life out of me. Is it because I'm moving? What is going on? <clears throat> no fucking way! Again?! <sighs> no way, no way! It's literally happening from everywhere! Oh my god! I literally... This is not real. No way! This is insane! This is like... Absolutely ins- Is there anyone here? No, I literally- Every door is slamming. Every door just slams shut. Oh my god. I don't know if you could see. All the doors are slamming shut. Oh, okay. <laughs> Strong. Yeah. So, this has been going on for the last 15 minutes. We were talking to the spirit, and I guess we gave it too much energy, and now things are getting worse. She thinks I'm somehow messing with her, but we are so behind on closing. Like, we have to still clean so much stuff. No. And they just won't stop. Like, the spirits won't give us a break right now. Oh, it, oh never mind. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I'm, I'm literally out of breath. I'm so, so nervous right now. Okay, so this is what we deal with here at Swirls. It's currently 11.18 and we're still not home. And okay, there is a sound right there and I guarantee I just saw a shadow. I hope I caught that. See? I don't get it. Is there a reason that you're doing this right now? Yeah, I'm this is our main panel. Okay, it stopped. Okay, okay, chill, chill. Okay, so this is what I... <gasps> no way! Bro, like... I just caught that literally right in front of me. I literally just caught that in front of me. No one is here. <laughs> it didn't just... <gasps> okay, 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 okay. Okay, come to the front. Come to the front now. Come on. Yeah, you. Okay. See, this is what I don't like. I hear footsteps from the attic right now. I'm literally still hearing it. I, I literally just saw a shadow. A shadow where? What's going on? Oh my god. 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 Okay, we need to get the lights on. Please come with me. Please come with me. Please go to the switch. Go to the main panel. Just go to the main panel. Okay, turn them on. Turn them on. Turn them on. 
Then, just when things were at their worst, things in Nick's life took a drastic turn. All of a sudden, the pipes in Nick's home burst and started leaking water under the flooring. Then, a foul stench filled his entire home in every single room. In turn, bringing thousands of flies, Nick would walk into a room and see flies all over the walls and in their food. And then, very sadly, Nick's dog died all of a sudden. All of these sad occurrences could have been down to the paranormal, but Nick didn't have proof. Remember, things started off funny and light-hearted, but look how things turned out. The paranormal shouldn't be messed with unless you know 100% what you're doing. Because of the burst water pipes and the flies and the smell and the death of Nick's dog, he took it really badly and became depressed. He stopped posting for almost five months and stopped eating too, which led to Nick losing 10 pounds. Sometime after this, Nick and his family moved out of the house and he and his family could finally put the paranormal activity to bed. So wherever you are, Nick, I hope today that you're okay. I wish you and your family the best of luck. Thank you. If you made it to the end, then I salute you. You proved you're a true fan of horror. So remember, if you're interested in ghosts, poltergeists and demons, haunted houses, random nautica and strange dark mysteries, serial killers, psychopaths and true dark crime, then Project Dark Knight Horror is the channel for you. I absolutely love all things horror and I'm so passionate about my channel. So, if you like what you saw and you think I deserve it, then can you please stab the like button for me and turn on the bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload a new video in the future. Also, I've got a private Facebook group that's been slowly growing over the last year and at the moment we just hit over 5,000 people in the community. So, if you're a fan of horror and you want to chat to like-minded people in a safe place and have somewhere to share your thoughts and videos, then why not join Project Dark Knight Horror in my private Facebook group. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below and I'll let you in. Thank you to all my Dark Knight members who support the channel every month. The names of the Dark Knight members are at the beginning of the video. Also, the list will be on the home page of my YouTube channel and I'll also put it up on my Facebook group. Thank you. Lastly, the biggest thank you goes to my loving and dear Patreons. Their names are Dawson Lip, Julie Six, Andrew M. Gross, Steve Launce, Laura Rohde, George Lopez, Cookie I Don't Know, Steve McMahon, Countess Monette, Greasy Cox, James Todd, Michael and Daniel Glass, and Julie Duncan. Thank you for your amazing and generous support. It's people like you that keep the lights on at Project Dark Knight. And remember, you've been watching Project Dark Knight Horror, and I am the Dark Knight. Signing off. Peace! Don't ever laugh as the hearse goes by, for you may be the next to die. They wrap you up in a big white sheet From your head down to your feet They put you in a big black box And cover you up with dirt and rock